that you have joined us this morning. Uh, thank once again to all my covenant partners, those that have been sowing into the ministry and blessing the ministry. I'm very grateful for your prayers, your financial support, and everything that you do for this ministry. Um, also, I'm grateful this morning you could have joined any other live broadcast, but you decided to join in and be a part of ours this morning. And we are grateful. And as I always say, there is a word from the Lord today. God has a word for me to give to the body of Christ today. I'm excited about this word. Uh, it was a word that I gave before, and sometimes the Holy Ghost will have you to go back to revisit what you said before. And we've been in a series that I'm excited about, and we're coming to the fourth chapter of it, and I believe God's going to really minister to somebody's heart and mind today. So I'm grateful for it, but before I get into that word this morning, I just have some brief announcements. As you know, I tell people we're not back in the building as of yet, but just because we're not in a building don't mean that expenses stop. We still have things we do. We have a website. We have a church app. We have other obligations that we have to fulfill. So whatever your, your tithe and offering are, we are a ministry that believes in the tithe. We not only just Malachi 3 and 10, but we also believe in the principle of giving. We believe that God requires us to bring the tenth to his storehouse. We bring the tithe that there may be meat in his house. And we're grateful for that. So those of you that are able to, there's ways that you can also support us financially. One of the ways that we, we do have Zelle. So if you have a Zelle, you can go on your Google the app, Play Store, and download the Zelle app. My wife will also put all of that on at the end of the broadcast. So when you're watching the recording, you'll see there's ways to give. We have Zelle as one of our ways to give. The number to that will be on there. I also have Cash App. My Cash App has changed. It was Apostle, it was Dollar Sign Apostle 1975, but it changed. So now it's Dollar Sign Apostle 2775. It's so a dollar sign Apostle 2775 and also the Venmo, uh, Apostle-1975. Venmo is Apostle-1975. Uh, we also, we have a new P.O. box. I will have that out soon. Uh, we changed P.O. boxes, so we do have a new P.O. box company that we deal with, and I'll have that on later. Also, if you're not doing anything throughout the week, every Thursday at 11.30 a.m., Pacific Coast Standard Time, and if you're on the East Coast for some of my watchers, 2.30 p.m., I am a part of a radio network called the DMV Powered Gospel Radio Network. Um, I have a live show now called the Fiery Furnace Broadcast every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m., and if you want to be a part of that network to call in to hear me teaching live, you will go to area code 206-806. 9770. I'll repeat that again. It's area code 206 806 9770. And you will hear me. And we have other dynamic men and women apostles and prophets that are part of this new thriving network. And I'm so graciously to be a part. Me and one of my covenant sisters, Apostle uh, Helen, uh, um, Helen is a part of this network as well. So that was how I got onto the network. It's been a blessing. And if you missed the recording, you can go back and always watch mine or hear mine pre-recorded. You can go to www.dmvpoweredgospelradio.net. And when you go on there, it'll have the list of all of our shows. You can click on, you can give that way as well, or you can go back and listen to the recording. But if you want to hear the recordings of all myself and all the other ministers, you can go to HTTPS. Uh, dot uh, colon slash slash DMV powered gospel dot airtime dot pro on there you will go back and, and catch my recording if you miss it on that Thursday they go back and, and they uh, re, re record it or replay it throughout the week so you can go to that um, part of it to catch it as well and I'm also on YouTube so I solicit my listeners that watch me on Facebook live please go to my page and like it go to YouTube page Apostle Jarvis Hines, hit the subscribe button because the most subscribers I get when I get to a certain amount of subscribers, if you get over to a thousand subscribers, you'll be able to go live. And I'm not at a, a thousand yet, but I believe I'm going to get there in Jesus' name. So I want you to be a part of that. They help me 
be able to get this gospel around the world virtually as well as physically. So whatever you do, please uh, join that network. Or as you can see on Sundays, my wife has the setup. And you can also go back and watch us later on on Facebook Live. Glory be to God. I'm excited about the word of God. Everything that God has been doing in the springtime. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a different shift that has occurred. And there's some things that God has illuminated to me. And he's opened up my eyes. Because what God is doing in this hour before I get into the word. He, 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 he's taking a lot of us through some things. He's exposing people to us. He's showing us who is and who is not. And he's also showing us that where I'm taking you, you don't need as many people as you think you do. Because if I'm before you, who can be against you? He's trying to teach us some things mm -hmm. to learn to trust him through everything. Because at the end of the day, people of God, you're, you're, it's only going to be you and him at the end of the day. And you have to understand that no God will use people. But here's what I've learned about people. People can only do so much for you. But when people don't come through, God's always faithful. And so I always want people to understand, keep your faith in the Lord. Keep your focus in the Lord. Keep your faith in him. That is where your faith and your strength and everything you need is going to come from. It's in your intimacy, in your relationship with him that God is going to move. So I'm excited about this word today that God has given me. And as we continue in the epistle of 1 John. So if you have your Bibles, meet me in the epistle of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, very familiar passage of scripture. We're still in the epistles of John. If you just before the book of Jude and Revelation, 1 John, uh, the old saints will say, I, John. I, John, 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. You can read along with me whatever translation or phone you may have or tablet, whatever you may have. Please meet us in the epistle of 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1, and we'll conclude at verse number 6. Glory be to God. And the Bible records this intelligence. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Verse 3. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming. And now it's already in the world. Verse 4. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Verse 5. They're, they are from the world. Therefore, they speak as from the world. And the world listens to them. And our concluding verse, verse 6. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. God bless you. Let me go back and let me conclude back at that first voice verse that I believe is going to really set the atmosphere. Verse 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Glory be to God. I want to use for a subject this morning or a thought as we can continue through the epistle of John. I want to use for a thought this morning as the Holy Ghost will lead me, listening to the right spirit. Mm -hmm. Listening to the right spirit. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stand before your people, Father, I decrease, I yield myself, I humble myself, I abase myself as a vessel, God. Anoint these lips of clay for your glory. God, I ask you to remove every weight, 
and every burden and every hindrance and every distraction that so easily to beset me, oh God. I ask you, God, to hide me behind your rugged, bloody cross, but stand your word up in me. Speak to me. Speak through me. But most of all, speak for me. Father, I just ask you that you shift the ear gates today, that we will really be sensitive to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Father. I ask you that you touch those that are in my presence and those that are listening to me virtually. Let the anointing begin to go through the, through the phones, through the computers, through the tablets, whatever device that they're using to see me today. I bind up every spirit of distraction, every spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. And I just ask you, oh God, that you will sanctify and let this word, God, not return back to you void. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let it accomplish what it was sent out to do. And, oh, God, we will continue to bless your name today, oh, God. God, let healing, miracle, wonders, and signs go forth as the word today. Let bodies be healed as of what they hear today. Let demons and devils cast out as of the word that will go forth today. And, God, I just ask you, as we continue to go throughout the rest of this day, we pray that you will continue to be glorified. We who are the sheep of your pasture will continue to be edified. Satan and his demons will continue to be terrified. It is this and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Learning to listen to the right spirit. Listening to the right spirit. My brothers and my sisters, men and women of God, I am sure you have often heard people talk about the Spirit has told them to say or to do. You have heard people tell you the Spirit told them to say or to do. But many women of God, the tragedy of that is the fact that often a spirit other than the Holy Spirit is speaking. There are a lot of people that will tell you that the Spirit told them this. But this is why you have to be careful what spirit it is. Right. Because there are three voices that you will hear, people of God, that will talk to you. You will hear God's voice. You will hear Satan's voice. But you will also hear your voice. And you have to be able to distinguish which voice are you listening to. We're, we're in a time today where people have an ear to hear things that will either make them feel great, that will make them feel as if they're on the right track when they know that they are not. There are a lot of voices speaking saying God say it when the reality is God didn't say it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it was God, but let me be clear as I continue to press my claim. Whenever God really tells you to do something, it's something that you really don't want to do. That's when you know it's the voice of God because when God speaks, it's a challenge mm -hmm. in your spirit. It's something that's impossible that you can't do humanly wise. That's when you know it's of God. So there's a spirit that is speaking, but we have to be discerning and distinguishing which spirit it is. Here it is. All that is said in the name of religion is not inspired by the Holy Ghost. Just because somebody said God said does not mean that it's of God. A lot of people are speaking in the name of religion and they're trying to make it seem as if because it is religion, it's relational. Just because it's in religion don't mean it came from the relationship of the one that's speaking. So we have to be very sensitive on the voice. I'm not going somewhere. Just hang out with me just a minute. What you're listening to. All that said in the name of religion is inspired not by the Holy Spirit. John, men and women of God, was aware in his day. And it is also true in our day that there are many people who tend to follow any and everything that religion has attached to it. We have a society that want to go hear a word. They will go way across the world just to hear a man or a woman of God speak. And can I help us this morning? You can pick up your Bible and hear the Holy Ghost for yourself. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should be able to just not listen to anybody. But what I am saying, we should never be wanting to go any and everywhere and attach ourselves to voices that we think are speaking. Speaking, uh, because it's our job to test the voices uh, or discern the voices that we are listening to. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, somebody going to catch you in right, just a right. minute. I'm going to break this off. Uh, here it is. They want to follow everything that has religion attached to it. But John would have us 
to know that there are some wrong spirits in the world uh, yeah. that are grappling for our attention. Uh, there's a major arising of cults uh, that are arising and we have a lot of people uh, that once started out being prophets uh, right. and have now turned into every other thing except the prophet. Let me right. come and get somebody. Uh, yeah. There are people now uh, that are speaking and saying God said uh, and they never pick up their word to hear from God. Uh, and can I help you? God confirms his word through his word. Uh, so there's no reason for us to be so caught up on every grappling voice that will get our attention. Uh, and, I, and can I just keep it real and park a note there before I press on, uh, Vanessa, in, the, in, in, in this society, uh, when I was growing up in my faith in the Lord, uh, when Jakes came to town, or Sap came to town, or Bryant came to town, or McClendon came to town, we will flourish and break our necks to get it. Or when Bynum came to town, or Joyce Myers came to town, we were so entertained with hearing the voices. Uh, but can I suggest to you uh, just because it's coming from them not everything is of God uh, and we have to challenge uh, we have to question whether it is of God anything that will grapple our attention uh, because can I just keep it real today people of God uh, we have people who want to have itchy ears uh, we have people that want to hear good stuff we want to hear we're going to get a house uh, we're going to get a husband uh, we're going to get a car and don't, don't get me wrong God wants to give us those things uh, but there are some things in our lives that will prohibit us uh, from receiving what God has for us. Uh, see, we don't want to hear those type of words uh, because those words uh, will break. Well, I don't like what he said. That offended me. Uh, if it don't offend you, it won't change you. Uh, right. Some things need to come to get you where God wants you to be. Uh, and that's why you got to be careful with the voices that are speaking to you saying it's a God. Here it is. Uh, the, the word for spirit here is the Greek word pneuma. Pneuma simply means the breath, the spirit, or the wind of God. It's, it's, it's God's spirit speaking. Uh, in, 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 in the Greek, uh, the word spirit also, where we get the word Holy Ghost, uh, is where we get the word alos parokletos. Uh, it means the comforter. Uh, it means the spirit of truth. Uh, he is the one that speaks. Uh, so it is the spirit. Spirit here, it referenced the wind, the breath, or the current air. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Right. Men and women of God, John was aware of the fact that God does not speak in every breeze that blows upon people. Every time somebody said God is saying, don't mean that God said. God just don't blow in every word that you hear. Because if I can just be honest, people of God, there are some words that we need to question. There are some words and I don't care what word it is, you always validate or you test the word with your Bible. If that word does not confirm what was already said, then you need to find out what spirit it is that's speaking through the vessel that's saying it's a word from the Lord. Glory be to God. I'm going somewhere. He says this here. For that reason, John wrote the words of our text, which brings us to point number one. Point number one says we see the problem. Uh, we see the problem why every voice that's speaking uh, is not of God. We see a problem here. Uh, let's look at the problem. Uh, in verse 1 it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, uh, but test the spirits uh, to see whether they are from God. Uh, because many false prophets uh, have gone out into the world. Uh, glory be to God. Men and women of God, it is important to understand uh, that every area of man's life uh, knows problems. Every person in here got problems. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved, sanctified, the Holy Ghost filled. As long as you serve Jesus, you will have problems. Uh, let me deal with the problems. Uh, you'll have people turn against you. Uh, you'll have people praying against you. Uh, you'll have people talking about you. Uh, all these are problems that come with you being saved, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled by the Lord. Uh, but here it is. Uh, if the devil does not come at us uh, through the evil, uh, he attempts to approach man at the point of his religion. Uh, one thing Satan will do, uh, Satan will attack you uh, based on what you believe and what you worship. His object is to get you to worship him. So I'm going to attack you in the place I know you worship in. So if you are a born again, blood washed believer, I'm going to attack your relationship with Jesus. Because I don't want you to worship Jesus. I want you to worship me. 
So I will use voices in the earth to get you to turn away from him so you can follow me. So I will attack man at his religion. And let me deal with that word religion here. What, the, what, what, what is being said here, the religion is man trying to find God on his own terms. Relationship has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with God reaching down to you, to pull you up. So it's not the religion that he's after, it's the relationship with the object that you worship that he is after. Glory be to God. Here it is. Watch this. Since John was aware of the tactics of the devil, he made his readers aware of a series of problems. So you have to understand, John says he's letting his readers aware. Listen to what he says. Below, do not believe every spirit. He's warning the believers. Remember, John here is writing to a first century church of Ephesus in the region of Asia Minor. And during this time period, people of God, there was what was called Gnostics. There were Judaizers. There were people who did not believe Jesus, didn't believe that Jesus was God in human flesh. And they were going around trying to come out with the little children. And when he says little children, he's not talking about in age or size. He's talking about their spiritual development oh, their oh, hey. So he's reminding them, I'm coming to you so when this spirit comes you will be strong enough to hear my voice not to resist oh, the hey. spirit that's trying to come against you. So he's letting them know, beloved, don't believe every spirit. Now, he says this, people of God, this word was a word of warning. Now, this warning was necessary then and it remains necessary today uh, because so many people are gullible. Uh, we have to keep this going uh, because some of us become born again. And can I just say it? We get slow. Uh, we get so opening and so accepting uh, that we don't test spirits anymore. Uh, just because someone says, God, God, uh, we assume that they're a brother or a believer. Uh, I'm coming down your block today. If I ain't came, I'm coming. Uh, yeah. This is the problem. Uh, just because everybody says, God, uh, I have to question what God are you talking about. Because there are many gods, but there's only one God, and that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the yeah. King of Kings, yeah. the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Messiah. Yeah. That is the one true and living God. Yeah. Yeah. So there are many spirits, but people are so gullible that they'll go for anything. Because a lot of times in this day's culture, a lot of psychics have turned prophets have turned into psychics. They can prophesy and get a word of knowledge, and everybody, because they give a word of knowledge, does not make them a prophet. And now there are some people that are prophets, but they are prophesying for prophet. Oh, let me help somebody. I won't give you a word unless you give me a seed. And that's not the way it's supposed to be uh, because the laborer is going to get his seed whether yes. you give him or her the yes. seed or not. Yes. Glory be to God. Let me press my claim. Uh, mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Yeah. Before Glory we are swept away uh, by many spirits of this world, uh, John tells us, people of God, uh, but test the spirits uh, to see whether they are from God. Uh, he tells us to test to try or to prove the spirits. I'm going to show you what John was alluding to when he says test the spirits. Here it is, people of God. Any person uh, who makes the claim of speaking uh, under spiritual inspiration uh, is making the claim of being the mouthpiece of some spirit. Uh, anybody that's speaking, uh, they're saying they're under the inspiration or the controlling or the filling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're being controlled by under the spirit in which they're speaking for or which the spirit is speaking through them. So here's what we do. But John said that before you trust it and make it a commitment, you should first test these spirits. He said before you, in other words, before Vanessa, you come subject, Manuel, you need to test these spirits to see if they are from God. Glory be to God. He uses the word called dikomizo. Dikomizo is the Greek word for test. And it means to prove or to scrutinize or examine or discern. I'm going to say it again. He uses the word dikomizo in the Greek. Dikomizo means to prove, to scrutinize, examine, or discern. In other words, when a person gives me a word, I immediately begin to scrutinize or examine that word. And how do I examine that word? I go to the word and I go into prayer and I ask the Holy Spirit what they told me of you. 
Because here's what's going to happen. Uh, in the biblical days of the Old Testament, man, I feel like preaching. Uh, you have to understand this. Uh, when a prophet spoke and said, thus said the Lord, uh, if what that prophet spoke uh, did not come to pass, uh, you didn't have to fear that prophet and they would kill that prophet because he was known as a lying prophet. Uh, and if I can be honest today, I know I'm going to get some letters and comments. I just don't care. Uh, can I help somebody? Uh, because we got a lot of people that have said God said something four years ago. Uh, and I'm not saying that God ain't slow concerning his promises, uh, but everything that they said wasn't in agreement with your spirit uh, because you did, you examined and you tested and God didn't tell you that. Uh, and that is how we're able uh, to discern if the spirit is speaking of God. Uh, we have to challenge the spirit because when we say amen, uh, what we're basically saying here uh, is so let it be. Uh, in other words, what you have spoken is so. Uh, if you go back in your time and read Jeremiah, I believe it's 20 when the prophet Hananiah comes on the scene and he takes the yoke that God himself put on, on Jeremiah's neck and told them that God going to break them loose, they're going to be prosperous. Now, they're in Babylonian captivity because of sin and disobedience. And this prophet tells them one thing, and even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. But God had to come back and God said, I didn't send that prophet and that prophet's going to die within a year. Go back and tell him what I said. And the prophet died. Can I just come on and be real with it, Mother Sally, today? We got to be very careful when we call ourselves prophets and apostles. And we're saying God said something because we're caught up in the moment. Or we're caught up in the ambiance of the atmosphere. We have to be very certain that what we're listening to, God said. And if it's God, we need to scrutinize, we need to examine, and we need to discern what God is saying. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus, John, people of God, was aware that behind every spirit is the power of God or the power of the devil. John was knowing that every spirit was speaking was either being used by God or it was being used by Satan. Satan also speaks through vessels too. Mm -hmm. Satan also will give you, and let me tell you something about Satan's word. Satan's word will make you feel good but won't hold you accountable. Oh God, let me say it again. Satan's word will make you jump, shout, do the watusi, and still you ain't in trouble with the Lord. But God's word put a check in your spirit. God God's word will make you examine your life. God's word will make you go back and turn back to him and say, God, if I'm not right, fix it and I'll get it right. That's the difference between God's word and the devil's word. Glory be to God. But to prevent the following teachings of the devil, John said, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. In other words, he said, we have to prevent these followings of these teachers of the devil. John says, test them. In other words, prove them. Decomizo, try them. Scrutinize them. When was the last time that you ever just heard somebody say something and they didn't agree with your spirit and you went home and you got on your knees before you got in your bed? You got on your knees before you got on your computer and your social media network to really hear was what you heard of God or was it their own word? Because sometimes people can speak stuff. And can I just be honest with you? We've been dealing with this in John. Some people can deceive themselves. And they'll tell a lie, but they'll believe what they told was true. Yeah. And it's not so. That's why we have to test. We have to prove. We have to try. Can I just be honest? There are a lot of people come up to me and say, God said and God said. The first thing I do, I say, God, did you send this spirit? Is it from you? Because many false prophets, that word prophet is the word prophetes. False means not true. Many mouthpieces are going out speaking, saying it's of God, and it's really not. Can I just keep it real? While most of our churches are destroyed, because we got a lot of people that we invite in our pulpits because they can draw crowds, because they're very charismatic, because they can do things. But we never test the character. We never test the anointing. We never try it by the word to see if it's of God. And we have to be very careful what we're listening to. And I'll give an example before I move on to my next and my closing point. Uh, the Holy Ghost had to check me uh, because I used to love to read books on deliverance and warfare. Uh, and yeah. one day he told me, uh, stop reading all these books. Uh, and I said, God, why? Because I'm, I was interested 
And he was casting out demons and devils. And he says, some of these people are being used by the same demons and devils that you're casting out. And you have to be discerning now to check to see if it's a me. And oh man, I know I'm finna get some letters, but I just don't care. Because here's where we are in the day's culture. Because if we don't start examining and testing everything, there are prophets that have familiar spirits that will draw to you. And can I, can I just go ahead and flow today while I'm here? You want to know the reason why some prophets know your business because you tell them too much. Right. And some of them can only prophesy based on what you say. Yeah. But a real prophet don't even have to sit down and have a conversation with you. Yeah. God will show them who you are in right. prayer. Right. And while, oh God, while they're seeking his face, they will discern what type of spirit you have. Yeah. So we have to be careful with the spirits. So, so we see the problem, right? And the second point here, we see the process. <laughs> With the problem comes a process. What is a process, people of God? A process is something that keeps reoccurring. It's a continuance of the problem that's been started. Because now that we got these false prophets in the world and they come out from us, what are they doing? Here's what John says in verses 2 and 3. He says, by this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, watch this, has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist of which you have heard that is something or is coming and now is already in the world. So this is what he says. He says every spirit that denounces the incarnation of Jesus Christ, every spirit that don't believe that Jesus took on the form of a human body. And can I tell you why? Because we have a lot of oneness people. And I'm not knocking anybody but Jesus was God. Because remember if you understand in your Bible, let me give us a little quick history. If you understand the word of God, in the Old Testament, no one had ever seen God. Not even Moses. He hid Moses in the cleft because the glory of God is so holy and we're flesh and because we're full of sin, we would have got wiped out. So what God says I'm going to do, I'm going to come in the form of a baby. I'm going to come as my Christ. I'm going to wrap myself up in human flesh and I'm going to come and dwell amongst you so you can look at me, so you can touch for me, uh, so I can be with you. Uh, so I, I'm gonna make it. In other words, I love what the late great uh, Archbishop Apostle Veron Ash said. Uh, in other words, God became like me uh, so I could become like Him. Uh, so in other words, I'm taking on the form of human flesh, uh, and He, anyone. Who denounces, let me slow down because I want to drive this home. Uh, every spirit that doesn't believe this uh, is of the Antichrist. Uh, prayer conference call line, uh, here's what the Antichrist is. Uh, even though we know the Antichrist will be raised up in the book of Revelation that I'm learning as a political power. But no, he's talking about Antichrist uh, is smaller and lowercase. Uh, which means we have Antichrist uh, in the world today yeah. uh, that denounce Jesus as being God. That don't even believe that he is the Lord. That he is the savior of the world. Those are the antichrists that fight against you and I. That don't believe how you and I believe. He said, this is the spirit of the antichrist, which you have heard now. This is first century and it's still relevant today. We still have people. I just found out we got a man in Jerusalem claiming he's the Messiah. We got different spirits being raised up in this hour because Jesus told us that these spirits, antichrist spirits, will come to claim that they are him. But he said, don't be deceived by that. So John here is letting us know, you have heard that these spirits, they denounce the incarnation of Jesus, being in the form of human flesh, being God walking amongst us, Emmanuel, which means God being interpreted God with us. They denounce him coming in human flesh. So here's what he said, they're already in the world. So John, people of God, gives his readers a sure way to recognize the real from the fake. John's getting ready to show us how we discern, uh, how we determine, brother, the real from the false. Here's how we do it. The origin of the spirit can be known by the context or content of the teachings. That's how we discern it. What is that spirit teaching? Can I just come on and say it? There's a lot of spirits, and I'll give you an example of that. Jim Jones started out preaching Jesus, but 
after a while, Jim Jones started teaching another spirit. Uh, but the people were so intrigued and engulfed with Jim Jones, uh, they didn't pay attention to the content uh, of what he was teaching. Uh, oh, God, can I help us today? Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming across the pulpit don't mean God sent it. Uh, because let me be real with you. Uh, when it comes from the word of God, it convicts you. Uh, it makes you mad. Uh, it makes you angry. Uh, but it makes you want to change. Uh, if it's something that makes you feel good and positive and enlightenment every Sunday, uh, then we have a uh, Houston, we have a real problem here. Uh, because can I just come on and help somebody? Uh, man, I'm trying to teach, but I feel happy today. Uh, yeah. Because let me help you. Uh, we have a people that want a, a golden corral message. Uh, they want all the good stuff over here, uh, but they don't want the stuff that's going to help you live. Uh, right. No, I don't want the vegetables. Uh, I want the potatoes, the fish, the shrimp. Uh, I want the I want the, the cinnamon rolls and the cake and all that. Uh, yeah. But I don't want the stuff that's going to help me live right. Uh, I don't want that. Uh, Y'all can keep that side. That's for the healthy people. I want to be healthy. I want to be obese. Uh, I want to be diabetic. Uh, give me the stuff that will make me feel good, but not the stuff that will help me. So it deals with the content of the teachings. Glory be to God. John said, by this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Every spirit that will acknowledge that Jesus walked as a mere man. He was the theanthropist. Theos meaning God. Anthropos meaning man. He was the God man. Man, I feel like preaching. He was the God man that walked amongst me and you. That's why the apostle said we looked on him. We beheld his glory. We touched him. We held with him. We ate with him. He walked with us. He showed us infallible proofs, as I said last week, of who he was. We saw him in human form. We saw them beat him and hang him on the cross. We saw them put him in an empty tomb. But we also saw him in his resurrected body that lets us know that this is the one that took on human flesh. That's why we can say Jesus is a God. Because he came in human flesh. We saw his, he showed us the nail prints in his hands. He showed us the, the, the spear that was driven in his side. He showed us the nail that was driven in his feet. And I don't know how you feel about it, but that's all the proof and the evidence that I need that he was in human flesh. Here it is. This is John was writing people of God to Christians who lived among people who did not believe in Jesus as the Messiah. He used their teachings about Jesus as a test of their genuineness. <laughs> because remember, he was dealing with Judaizers who were still under the Mosaic law trying to persecute Jews who had come and accepted Jesus. Let me give a little history in this context here. What John was going up against during this time, there were people called Gnostics and there were people who were called Judaizers. I'm saying it again, Gnostics and Judaizers. What were the difference? Gnostics were the ones that denounced Jesus as being God. They believed he was a mere man until he hung on uh, he was God, but until he hung on the cross and died, they didn't believe in his deity. But they didn't know uh, that was a part of God's original intent, uh, was to kill his son for the sins of the world. Uh, yeah. So he had to come in the form of a human uh, because the animals wasn't cutting it no more. Uh, how many lambs were we going to kill? Uh, how many sheep were we going to kill? Uh, how many turtle doves uh, were we going to kill? Uh, so he's testing them about showing them the genuineness uh, of who Jesus was uh, by coming in the human flesh. Uh, because if you believe that Jesus was a God, you would not denounce him being incarnate. You would not denounce him coming in the flesh. You would not denounce him or try to debate with him over the fact. And then the Judaizers were trying to get the people to say, unless you believe in Moses, you cannot be saved. But it was Jesus said everything that Moses said, he spoke of me. So everything that you were hearing, I had already wrote. Because I was with the Father in the beginning. That's why they wanted to stone Jesus. Jesus, uh, because Jesus was making clemency or claim uh, that he was God in human flesh. Yeah. And according to the law, or the Judaizers or the Pharisees, uh, they were accusing him of being a blasphemer. Uh, yeah. A blasphemer is somebody uh, who's blaspheming the scriptures uh, or not keeping it in its context the way it should be, but I'm the one that wrote the context. Uh, so if I wrote it, uh, I'm the one that should be able to explain what I'm saying here 
that, that, that backs up my deity. Can I help somebody? Uh, I grew up in the world, and let me just help us. Uh, back in the day, we had a thing called biting. Uh, and when you originated something, uh, and you go and catch somebody else doing what you do, uh, you will step to them and say, how did you get that? Uh, and they'll say, oh, I originated that. No, you did not. Uh, you saw somebody get it from somebody who got it from the person. Uh, so in other words, you trying to become a copycat or make up something that was already originated. Uh, yeah. If you uh, started it, uh, and anybody take it, it's called copy infringement. Uh, you can't take anything that you didn't put together. Can somebody holler at me? Uh, yeah. You cannot claim anything that you did not do. And this is what John is doing. He's testing them to see, okay, the genuineness of who they are by acknowledging Jesus is coming in the flesh. In the flesh of those who are from God. Those who believe that Jesus is God in human flesh is of God. Because they're believing in the incarnate of Christ walking the earth as a man and as God. But here's what he says also. The claim of the incarnation of Jesus only comes through divine inspiration. The word John uses here for confession is homologio. Is homologio. It has to do with a deep conviction because of facts. So in other words, the only way you can acknowledge this unless the Holy Ghost reveal to you or to illuminate to you who Jesus really is. You will never come to understand who Jesus is with your own fleshly understanding. Come on. Can I just go and break somebody off? That's why we got people that can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And you know what they'll tell you? It's a good book. It's a book of inspiration. It's a book of stories. But when you allow the Holy Ghost to get in you to illuminate to you, you. It becomes more than just a book. It becomes more than just good parables and stories and prophetic utterances. It becomes a part of your life. And once it becomes a part of your life, it brings a deep conviction to you that I know God more than just a book. Let me put a little pen right here. I was watching the movie called The Book of Eli, and Denzel was carrying the Bible around, and the men took the Bible. But when Denzel got to the place, he told the young girl that was traveling with him, he said this, and I quote, he said, I was so busy uh, trying to protect it uh, when I already had it on the inside. Uh, see, what you got to understand, uh, you, can take, you can take my Nelson King James Study Bible, Amplified New American Standard, uh, but when you got it inside of you, baby, uh, it'll come right back up out of you uh, because it brings a conviction of who God is to you. Yes. yes. So it's a conviction here. Facts. In the chapter of one of the epistles, John gave the facts concerning the incarnation of Jesus. In other words, John's given proof, not fiction, not what he heard, not what he heard somebody else say. Because remember, this John here is the beloved John. This is the one that he said, behold, my mother. This is the one that was on his right hand that, held, that, that, that laid his head on him. This John. It's the same John who brother got killed first, which was James. This John is the same John that was exiled to the island of Patmos by Domitian to write this book called Revelation. This is the same John. So John is not writing off of what he heard. John is writing off the fact that I had relationship with him. Can I part right there? When you know Jesus for yourself, can anybody tell you what you didn't encounter with him when you have relationship with them? It's one thing to say, I know you, but when I up on you and you know me, I have koinonia. I have fellowship with you. And when I have fellowship with you, there's nothing that anybody can say that will change that. Glory be to God. Here it is. He said that Jesus was seen, heard, and handled by the disciples. He's telling you we touched him, we ate with him, Vanessa, we traveled with him, we heard him. Mm -hmm. See, it's one, it's one thing. That's why when you tell people God spoke to you, they think you're crazy. Uh, but the reality of it is the Spirit of God really speaks to you. Uh, yes. Because when you accept him, uh, he comes in and makes his residence with you. Uh, right. And I can't, well, I can't live in a house with you and not talk to you. Uh, right. And once I live with you, me and you going to have some conversations. Uh, right. Whether you want to talk or not, uh, I'm going to talk to you because I'm connected to you. Uh, mm -hmm. So he lets them know that we've held him, we've heard him. 
and the disciples have witnessed this about him, but also people of God, only those who have seen Jesus with the eye of faith heard him in the gospel story and handled him by receiving him into the heart. In other words, those of us that may not have seen him like they seen him physically, we've seen him by faith. We believed in his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We believed Watch this, that he is Christ. That's how we've seen him. Because do you remember when Thomas, when Jesus walked in and doubting Didymus, Thomas said, I will not believe him unless I see him. And Jesus said, here I am, Thomas. Touch my hands. Touch my feet. Thomas bowed down before Jesus. And he said, my Lord and my God. He said, because you've seen me, you believe me. But blessed are they who have not. That word blessed means happy are they who have not seen me. But yet believe me. I may have not seen him physically. I've seen him in my dreams. I've seen him in my encounters. But I believe that he is. I believe everything that he said he came here to do, he did. Not only because the word said it, because it's in my spirit that he did. And I believe by faith, with the faith of my eyes in the spirit, I believe that Jesus is who he said he is. Glory be to God. He says also handling him by receiving him into the heart can confess that he came into the world as the God man. When he's in your spirit, you can say, oh yeah, Jesus was God. He was the God man. He was the theanthropus. He was God and man. Yes, he was. Not only because his book says it, because I've had an encounter with him and I believe that what he said it is so. Glory be to God. Verses 3 is the very opposite of verse 2. Despite how a teacher may claim to be, Denial of Jesus coming in the flesh is a clear evidence of the teacher not being from God. <laughs> it's clear evidence that he can teach about it all day. But if he denies the incarnation of Jesus, then he's not from God. That's right. Straight up, he can teach all day. He can be as positive and enlightening and inspiring as he wants. But if he's not preaching the fact that Jesus came in the form of a human body, what do you think was hanging on that rugged cross? Mm. There wasn't no spirit up there. It was a literal body yeah. that was hanging that Jesus had. Our history books validated. All of this stuff tells us. So it wasn't like it was no hoax. It was his actual body. So to denounce him is to say you really don't believe in God. Because God said it throughout the prophets and the scriptures that he was sent his son into the world. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Watch this that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. Mm -hmm. This is what the scripture clearly teaches here. Here it is. The truthfulness of any here it is. The truthfulness oh my God of any teacher is what he believes about Jesus. Yeah. The truth of a believer. See, because a lot of people, as I get ready to come to my clothes, a lot of people can teach this, mm -hmm. but they don't believe this. Mm -hmm. Can I just be honest? And I'm getting ready to close. I feel like I feel like preaching today because a lot of people, Emmanuel, can teach it because people teach it with different motives and different reasons. Mm -hmm. Some people teach it because it can draw people. Some teach it because it can bring money. Some teach it because it makes them sound studious or intellectual. But some of us teach it because we've been convicted by it and we know the truth and the power which comes from behind the prophetic word of God. So what John is saying, the true evidence of a teacher's truthfulness is what he believes about Jesus. Uh, yes, I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, yes, I believe Jesus arose on the third day. Uh, yes, I believe Jesus got up with all power in his hand. Uh, yes, I believe that Jesus is now at the right hand making intercession for us. Uh, yes, I believe that Jesus is coming back again uh, with us in the rapture to get us. Uh, yes, I believe that when he comes back on the second return, uh, he's going to wipe out the Satan, uh, the Antichrist, the false prophets, uh, and all of those that raise war against his people. Yes, I believe that he's going to wipe this earth out the to create a new heaven and earth. Yes, I believe. And it's not enough for me to just say I sound studious. I believe in the life, death, burial, and resurrection. And how do I know? Because I'm on my feet to tell you that I believe. Yeah. I could have been dead and lost in my sins, yeah. but he let me live to tell somebody. That's why I believe, based on my teachings of who Jesus is, I believe. That's who he is. Glory be to God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus. In closing, John said, this is the spirit of Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming and is now already in the world. This spirit that I'm telling you about, little children, those who are not spiritually mature, you heard about this spirit. In other words, I'm reconfirming to you not only that you heard about it, but that spirit is here now. It is still running rapid in the earth, bringing deception or trying to deceive God's people. It's still that same spirit. Watch this. Any religion that denies Jesus as the Messiah is Antichrist. Oh, boy. Well, all of us believe in Jesus. I'm a Muslim, but I believe in Jesus. I'm Hindu. I believe in Jesus. I'm Buddhist. I believe in Jesus. I'm Hebrew Israelite. His name ain't Jesus. It's Yeshua. And if you call him Jesus, then you're the one that's wrong. Oh, no, no, no. I believe in Jesus, huh? but but yeah, 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 just because you believe in Jesus, huh? it's the obedience of believing in him that makes you who you are, huh? not by you doing it by your own performance, huh? mm -hmm. because demons and devils believe, huh? yeah. but they fear and trouble, but they won't obey. Huh? Right. They believe who he is, they know who he is, but they won't obey. Huh? So any religion huh, that tries to teach, watch this, huh, that they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, in the Antichrist. So can I come on and let, let me go ahead and make a checklist? All the ones that come and knock on your door saying, come on in. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They don't believe that. No, they do not. They don't believe that. They don't even believe in the cross. They call it a stake. They don't even believe that this Jesus is who he says he is. Anyone that denounces him as Messiah. Messiah means the anointed one. The Lord and Savior. Anybody that denounces him as being Lord and Savior is of the Antichrist. And what does an anti-person do. It tries to block you yeah. from believing what is truth. I'm, I'm anti, which means I'm opposed against Jesus. I don't believe in that white man blue-eyed devil. Just because Da Vinci painted the picture and all our grandmamas had it hanging up on our kitchens, that ain't who he is. Right. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let me go ahead and wrap this thing on up. It's against Christ. It is opposing Christ, people of God. Who Christ is and what he came into the world to do is the central point of Christianity. When you oppose Christ, it tries to stop from, from who he was and what he came in the world to do. He came to the world to save it. He came to restore us back in relationship that the enemy had took away from us in the garden. Yes. I came to restore that. But the enemy's job is to try to keep us away from that. So he keeps us ignorant and blind. And he brings religious systems. So we start trying to follow things to try to do things that he already done that you and I could not do. Okay? In closing, he says, the world to do is the central point of Christianity. Those religions that deny Jesus as the Christ neither have God the Father nor God the Holy Spirit. So if they don't have Jesus, they ain't got the Father they ain't got the Holy Ghost either. Because you can't have one without the other because they're all one. Yeah. In essence, you got to have all of them. Some people just want a little part of you, but they don't want all of you. Can't have that. God is one, three within one person that is eternally distinct, but he is one God. Yeah. One God. And I want us to understand that we have to be sensitive to what voice we're listening to. There's a lot of voices. I got part two next week. Because a lot of people that are listening to a lot of voices. Mm -hmm. And since I've been down and, and been off of networks, and, and, and there are some times as I close and I, I offer the call to discipleship and salvation, I want you to know this. There's been times I want to speak, Mother Sally, and the Holy Ghost say, shut your mouth. Yeah. Sister Shannon, Brenda, Des, Tony, there was times I wanted to get up and say something. God said, don't you open up your mouth. Because now, it's you speaking. Because yeah. when I speak, it's for purpose. Yeah. So when God is talking to you, he ain't just telling you to do something to do it. It's for purpose. And those who only hear him have him and his son and his spirit. If you don't have that, you don't. You hear the spirit, but it's not of God. You can be in church every Sunday, hear every good sermon, and still miss God. Mm -hmm. Have a whole bunch of notes and, and still miss it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, 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 it's a divine inspiration. It's internal that you hear him. Not always with the ears on your face. It's your spirit that hears him. 
Because his spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Hallelujah. And that same Jesus that I just brought to you today, he's the true and living God. He's the one that you saw beat up. That's the one that you see hanging on crosses in mausoleums and museums. That's the Jesus that you see on Passion of the Christ that Mel Gibson did that depicted his beating. That's the Jesus I offer to you today. Wherever you are. And the enemy will deceive you. This antichrist spirit will tell you I've done things so bad that I messed up. I'm a druggie. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a prostitute. I'm a liar. I'm a whole mugger. Why would God want to save me? You're the exact one he came to save. Yeah. And I'm coming to give you hope today. Yeah. Don't listen to every spirit. God will love you. How do you think most of us have come to him? We wasn't always like this. I came toe up from the floor up. Mm. A wreck up from the neck up. And God accepted me. And he will accept you. That's why he took the beating. And the humiliating and the scalding. Last week we told you how they beat him so bad beyond recognition. How they mocked him. How they drove spikes of, of thorns through his brain that it pierced his skull. How he lost so much blood refusably, but he but he said, Father, into their hand, my hands, I commit your spirit. I came here to do this. Yes, yes, yes. They didn't just do I let them do this. That's how much he loved you. you your homeboy ain't gonna get no spikes drove in his wrist for you. Mm -hmm. Your homegirl ain't going to take no bullet for you. Jesus took it all. He paid it all. The blood is the down payment. But can I help you today? Today is a good day to come up under that blood that still washes, justifies, regenerates, and cleanses. Today is the day of salvation. And we offer Jesus to you wherever you may be. If you're in that hotel room, I, I, I prophesy to you. Don't pull the trigger. Don't take the drug. In the name of Jesus. You got life to live for. You got a purpose for your life. I prophesy through the line today. I'm standing in my apostolic office to let you know that Jesus loves you. Yes. There's nothing you've done so wrong that he won't forgive you. Well, well, apostle, you don't understand. I have a perverted lifestyle. And such was some of you. Hallelujah. But you've been washed and justified and sanctified. He came to give you life. And I pray wherever you are, Father, in the name of Jesus, repeat after me, Lord, I am a sinner. And Lord, I need to be saved. I've heard your word. And I believe in your life, in your death, in your burial, and your resurrection. And I believe that they put you in a borrowed tomb. But I also believe you arose on the third day. And you are now at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. So Lord, today I believe and I accept you you as Lord, as Lord and Savior, and Savior. I, ask you, I ask you come into my life, come into my life and, be Lord and be Lord and my God, and my God. in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Amen if you just believe in the first time you are now in the family of faith but don't stop there as I always say you need to find a ministry that believes in the fivefold the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist the pastor and the teacher the apostle, the one that plants and builds and makes sure that the doctrine is sound to help you grow. The prophet is the mouthpiece that hears from God and speaks the message over the people as what God is saying. The evangelist or the evangelizo gets that gospel message and goes out and tells people that Jesus loves you to repent for the kingdom is at hand. If you accept him as Lord and Savior, he'll be your Lord, he'll be your Savior. Not only that, then you got the poemen. The shepherd who protects, who comforts, who nourishes you. And then once he does that, he also has the function to teach you, to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. We, we pray that wherever you go, you find a Bible teaching ministry, Bible teaching and believing, and that believes in the gifts of the Spirit, and believe in allowing the Holy Ghost to have free reign so you can grow and become what God's called you to be. In the name of Jesus. 
when I pray for people of God, I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. I thank you for joining us for another live broadcast, and I pray that your week will be blessed. I pray that whatever God has in store for you, that you put yourself in position to receive what God has for you. Learn to listen to the right spirit. May God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace.